Hello, algorithms and soulmates. I'm Al Reynolds, and this is my new show on YouTube called The Court of Public Opinion, the place where you, the viewers, the people, have a voice and will be heard. If you're new to our courtroom, make sure you grab a seat and make sure you hit that like button. If you have subscribed already and are new to the uh, courtroom, please subscribe. Hit that like button and subscribe. And make sure you also leave us a comment. In the meantime, make sure you grab a seat and maybe a pencil and pad because we are definitely going to be teaching you a thing or two that you can exercise in your own life. But don't forget to hit that like button. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to leave a comment. Now, for all the newbies, don't be alarmed. Think of the court of public opinion as Nancy Grace meets Rapid Fire meets Fox Soul's Face Off. What I mean by this is this courtroom right here, it's going to be disruptive. It's going to be messy. It's going to be loud. We're going to, we're going to interrupt people. We're not going to let people complete their sentences. We might shout. We might fight. We might cheer. It might be a little bit of the above, all of the above, but know this, it's going to always be informative, okay? And also, we may spill some good tea. Now, buckle up. I'm your host and judge, Al Reynolds, and today I have my legal beagles, the original three, the incredible, wonderful attorney, Simone Redwine, and also the criminal defense attorney, Brian Ross. All it's right, everybody. Out. All right, put those, put those in the emoji, put those fax machines in the emoji, put those wine glasses in the emoji, and for Brian, please put those briefcase emojis in the fact in, into the chat. Now, listen, guys, we have an incredible lineup for you tonight. We're going to be talking about Kansas City Chiefs Rasheed Rice, such a handsome young man, but in such a hot boiling water he's in tonight. What you know, why is he running from the police? Why did he find himself in this accident and not stand? Does he not want us to know who was in that car, or is he more concerned about his seven million dollar bag? Next, we're going to talk about a Detroit teacher. She is suing after claiming she was wrongfully fired for being a rapper part time. Is it okay that her stage name is called Dripping? Honey, is it okay that her students were in the video with dripping honey? All right, now I've heard a whole lot of WAP talk, but dripping honey seems hotter than that. Third, we're going to talk about Caesar Emanuel. As he asks, is flying a girl out to come see you? Now considered sex trafficking. Oh, we got some hot tea for you right here. And I think everybody in earshot wants to hear about this. All you guys, be sure to get your pen and pad and paper out because we got something that you need to know as it relates to that. Next, we're going to talk about Kobe Bryant's family. Kobe Bryant's family had the audacity to sell the championship ring that Kobe Bryant gave to the parents. Does he, do they, the parents have the right to do that? Or do they need the approval of Kobe Bryant's estate? Does Vanessa need to say to his parents that it's okay? Or can they do what they want to do? Next, we're going to talk about Reggie Bush. Baby, Reggie Bush is not letting down. He, in fact, was filing a defamation case against the NCAA. And you know what? The NCAA is saying, kiss my ass. That's right. You heard me. They said, kiss my ass, because they're saying that it's a false lawsuit with fundamentally flawed circumstances. We're going to make sure our legal beagles break this down and tell us, does Reggie Bush have a case? And if you could put that picture back up, would anybody ever say no to Reggie Bush? Not me. Last up. <laughs> Last up. We're going to make our way to Texas, where our legal beagle, Simone Redwine, resides. And not only does she reside in the state of Texas, but she resides next door to our next subject talk. Oop. Oop. <laughs> Told you, sometimes we might spill the tea, and I think I just spilled some tea. Y'all see Redwine is mad at me. Anyway, we're going to talk about... tell my business all day today. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to talk about turkey leg hut. Turkey leg hut. It's filing for bankruptcy. Oh, wow. 
amidst a messy divorce. Do you think that she's trying to file for bankruptcy because she don't want that man to get what he's owed? Mm. Messy, 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 Miss Turkey Leg. But we're going to get to it all tonight, uh, soulmates and algorithms. Be sure, come on, give me some more of those fax machines. Give me some more of those red wine emojis. And don't forget those briefcase emojis as we dive in tonight's show of the Court of Public Opinion. All right, red wine and uh, Brian and, and attorney Ross, are you ready for tonight? Ready. I'm ready. Are you guys right, ready? Ready. ready. Uh, oh, it's about to get messy ready. in here. I don't know which one I want to start with first, but let's go to this very handsome young man, Rasheed Rice. Now, we know Rasheed Rice has a very healthy contract. The contract is four years. It's valued about $7 million. He's just getting started in his professional career, and damn, he's found himself in some really hot water. Mm. So, Simone Redwine, please tell me what is going on here. And is what he did completely irreparable at this point? Or is he in jeopardy of losing his big time, long wanted and earned NFL contract? Gotcha. So I'm going to give you the facts real quick. It happened just up the street. And I'm going to toss it to Brian to wow. tell us his thoughts on the criminal law. So here um, he was driving. Rashid was driving. He had leased a Lamborghini for $1,200 for the day. He's supposed to be racing his homeboy that is in his Corvette. So he lets his homeboy drive his Corvette. And there's footage basically of the two of them. And uh, Rashid's car flies out of control first. And it ends up crashing and hitting, I think it is, four other vehicles. Miraculously, Ooh. no one was seriously hurt, which generally means no one left the scene in an ambulance. However, with him walking away from the scene, so there's footage of Rashid and his buddies, all walking away from the scene, many are wondering, could there be criminal charges? Was he drunk driving? Because he was leaving one of the best Dallas brunches at local TAC, which is one of my faves. So, and there are photos online of him enjoying himself at brunch just before the accident. Wow. Ryan, what you think? I think that leaving the scene of an accident in any state is a problem. There's two different areas too. If you leave the scene of an accident, it's just, there's no one injured. That's one thing. You leave the scene of an accident, someone's hurt. That is a felony, which is a now problem for him because his contract mm -hmm. says we don't have to pay you if you get convicted of a felony. Oh, I'm sure yes. he sobered up very quickly and realized that. And you can bet that a talented attorney like Simone Redwine will go back to that brunch place and ask for a copy of what he purchased and what he. Oh, yeah, you want to run on that credit card? Absolutely, yes. absolutely. Don't be paid cash. <laughs> don't be paid cash. <laughs> yes. But also, um, one of the things I noticed, though, because I, I literally, I own property right there. Um, this is called Uptown Dallas. If you look at where he had the accident, there's no median. There's a sliver on the side of the road. So truly, mm. there's no safe place for him to wait. And he certainly could not have waited in the car. In fact, one of the cars was flipped the opposite direction. So mm. if I was his criminal attorney, I would use the, the reasoning of, hey, everyone left. It wasn't just him. Everyone in those cars left because of the fact that there was no safe place to wait for authorities. Okay, you know, you know ridiculous. We've heard more, more ridiculous and it has worked. Let me ask you this. Could you ever argue, and now this is what I hear a lot of, could you ever argue in a state of panic? Because a lot of psychologists on the stand will say, well, my client was in a state of panic. And, and you know, in psychology, in psychologically in state of panic, we don't, we don't behave or respond like we normally would. So if he drove off, but then called back, would that have any help for him in his case as it relates to this? Um, It depends on, honestly, Judge, honestly, Judge, it depends on what the statute says. If the okay. statute says you have to stay and he left, you got a problem. But if he called back, we would argue he made the responsible decision because there was no place for him to go. That would be the That'd argument, be argument. but it would depend on, again, what the statute says. In Florida, it says don't leave. You have to wait. At least exchange information. And, and that's the big part. And what is it in Texas, Red Wine? Um, you're supposed to exchange information, but the rules are more lax if no one was injured. So that is likely going to save him, um, as well as if 
for example, he may have allowed one of his buddies that was with him and said, hey, you give everybody the stuff because as a famous person, that's what I would do because I wouldn't want to exchange information with them, them having my info and then them realize, so hey, I'm a jackpot. Especially, so uh, well, especially because the other car, his buddy was driving the other car, right? So okay. life, uh, registration and stuff was in that other car they could have provided to him. But they did state that he immediately, while on the scene of the accident, text the company he leased it from and said, I was involved in an accident and I okay. will pay for the damages. Got it. So he did show good faith. Right. In yes. Now, can I give a little legal tea here? Sure. Uh, I'll, a little tea, which is that if I were representing any of the four people that he hit, right, I understand they're saying miraculously no one was injured. Those kind of accidents, why those cars got spun around? You may not feel your injuries until the next day or days right. later. That's right. But my number one tip would be, number one, if your car was totaled, right? If it was totaled in the accident, the number one mistake that people make is they only get an appraisal of the value of their car from the person who hit them. Uh-uh, don't do that. You want to get one from the person who hit you and one from your insurance company because you're they're never the same and you get to go with the higher value, okay? Wow. So I have seen where there has been a two to $3,000 difference in the two appraisals. So you get the higher and people think, oh, but if I call my insurance, my rate's gonna go up, uh-uh, because it wasn't your fault. As long as the insurance gets reimbursed by the other person's yes. insurance, which they will hear, it will never go up and that reimbursement will give you back your deductible. Well, let me tell you about my street smarts, what my years <laughs> of street smarts have taught me. Yeah. All right. Now, look, don't judge me. If a Lamborghini hits my car and somebody get out that look like a professional athlete, <laughs> I'm going to start rolling on the ground. <laughs> going to the hospital. And I'm going straight <laughs> to the hospital. When I say I will not be able to walk, I will not be able to walk. I will not be able to see. I would have all of us lost be my hearing. Kyle, my, neck, my back. My back. My, 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 my neck. My, my, those my individuals, my those football players have some of the best insurance that you, you could ever imagine. Not That's only on themselves, oh. but against their their li liabilities, things that yes. they may do that are stupid. And that's one thing that I, I'm so sorry that none of them figured it out. But for me, that's what I would have done. And I know that's not the best advice. And I know, but this is a court of public opinion. This is not a court. <laughs> oh, you're no, not, you're not, say, you're not alone. JD, JD, I, right? I, agree with you. I would say, even if you did not leave the accident, see, I tell uh, clients that call me all the time because I specialize in serious injuries and wrongful death. Uh -huh. I say, you know, even if you don't leave the accident in ambulance, it's okay. I can explain that away because you're like, I have somebody who can take me. I didn't want that cost. We yeah. all know it's extra one to yeah. 2000. I said, but you need to go within 24 hours to just get checked out. And then if you start feeling away within a week, go back. We can handle your case. You don't, just because you didn't go that day, you you can still go. You can exactly. still, right, exactly. Because you your soreness go. doesn't come, honestly, mm -hmm. your soreness doesn't come until days later. Right. Absolutely. And, and see, my whole thing is I feel like keep your story consistent. When he hit me, I fell out. I fell out. <laughs> I fell out. <laughs> it was funny is if you I go fell back, out. I, I fell out right out. there. I, I got right my there. injury right there. Maybe my <laughs> neck, my back. I can't hear in the good eye that I did have. I can't see out of it. No I day. fell out right away. <laughs> and it's important to remember, Al. I can't go to work. Henry Ruggs was the uh, a player for the Las Vegas Raiders, almost called the Oakland Raiders, they did move. Uh -huh. He was driving his Corvette down Las Vegas Boulevard, right, 165 miles an hour, hit and killed a woman in it three to ten years. So the NFL is all over this stuff now. Type of stuff. Okay, guys, I did, Ron. I'm glad you brought that up because that was going to be my next question. If you represented Rice, right, your first concern would be his contract. Like, let's call it spade to spade. After you found out that he's okay, after you found out that he didn't hurt anybody, your first concern is his contract and the possible lawsuits around it. Do you, at this time, um, uh, lawyer Redwine and Rouse, do you place a call in to the to front office of the team? What do you do? Like, how do you handle this? Because you have to protect that contract. 
Right. Go so ahead, what do you do, Ross? What would you be doing? I, I will uh, in any contract that the NFL players sign, there is an, a duty to cooperate. So you have yes. an obligation to cooperate with authorities. Each team has its own security person. The NFL has investigators. If they come, you're required to talk to them and in good faith tell them the truth. So if you don't do yes. that, you could be in breach. Now let's be realistic, Ooh. okay? If you are the Patrick Mahomes of the Kansas City Chiefs, they're going to do a lot to help you out. Right. That's right. If you are a four-string quarterback that graduated from high school and never played in the pros and you're there carrying shoulder pads, you're going to have a problem. Gotcha. Fortunately for Mr. Rice, he seems to have some talent, and I bet the organization goes out of its way to help him out. Got it. All right. You know, that's good. You know what? Honestly, I got to say that that's good to know because we make mistakes, we make mistakes. right? Absolutely. This is why this is why I think luxury cars cost what they cost because not everybody at that age can afford them because they don't they don't need them. <laughs> <laughs> how much is a Lamborghini Urus? I mean, how this much is a car quarter of a million cost? dollars? Right. Starts at a quarter of a million dollars. Lord, that's wow. nice. that's many homes in a lot yeah, of neighborhoods. All right. right, I think we done talked this one out. Great conversation, attorneys. Let's go over to this teacher. A teacher. A teacher is supposed to be a role model to the students. A teacher is supposed to be and represent the school district as well as the school that she teaches in. Well, there's a Detroit teacher that's suing after claiming that she was fired. She says she was fired wrongfully for being a rapper part time. Mm. All right. Now, tell me, attorney Redwine and attorney Ross. She's saying that she was wrongfully terminated because in this particular case, she felt like that she was not a distraction to her job as a teacher, to the students that she was teaching, and to the, the school that she was teaching at, nor the school district. Because that school district, and she signed a contract and agreed to all of this, has a distraction-free clause in her contract that says that if she, meaning her, becomes a distraction, then she could be let go. What does this actually mean, Attorney Redwine? Hmm. It basically means you can't do whatever you want. Just because you're an underpaid, overworked teacher. I know she's uh, underpaid and overworked, right? But what it means is if something is a distraction where people are not... Uh, it could be parents, it could be students, it could be whomever would not no longer see you as a valid authority, would no longer mm. see you basically in like a role model type of role um, such that you can't simply teach without people asking you, oh, when are you going to do your next uh, music video? Oh, I like the way you had that thong on, Miss Jackson. Any of that, you can't do that. And the school has the right to say you are not a good fit for us. The rule applies in corporate America, and I think it should absolutely apply when it comes to other people. But wait a minute, I'm gonna have to push back, Red Wine. What I do in my private you. in my private time, the kids love me. I just want teacher of the month. You guys know I'm a good teacher. I'm the best history teacher. You just gave me teacher of the month. I've been doing it for a little while. The kids love me. This is on mm -hmm. my private time. This is How in the, this is in clubs. <laughs> Why, why, why should I have to be worried about what I do at night, what I do at festivals, what I do in the, in the studio? Why should that matter with how good I am with those kids? Al, you said the key word, what I do in my private time. Once you take it to social media, it is no longer private. Wow. You have taken your private time public. And once you do that, you subject yourselves to the thoughts of the parents and the teachers. I would like, if I don't have any kids, but when I do, I want to be able to tell each of my children to look up to your teacher. Mm. I want you to say, I want you to emulate her. Baby. And if she's over here calling herself hot, dripping, pussy lips, I, I don't want you to walk around with those. I mean, that was the title. That is her title. No, it's, it's, it's honey, dripping, honey, dripping pee. Y'all, the big word is it. <laughs> Dripping honey pussy. That's the rapper name. That is, WAP is called WAP for a reason. You can't even use that word on the radio. So if you want to give yourself a rapper name, your students are not even allowed to pronounce without getting their mouths washed off with soap. Ma'am, you're a distraction. 
Now, I'm I was going to come in as devil's advocate. Hold on. And, I'm and on the to you. Stay right there, <laughs> Attorney Ross. Attorney Ross, if you were representing this particular teacher, Dominic Brown, what would your argument back be? Uh, listen, we have a First Amendment right to say whatever we want. We don't give that right up because it's fundamental because we choose to become teachers. I exercise my First Amendment right to make music. I believe in this music is what our statement was. We are in Motown as part of my culture and the school district has no right to govern what I do. The problem I'm going to run into ultimately is it's fine. Keep your private life separate. No problem. But when you start making videos with the kids and you're doing these yeah. lyrics, you... Uh -huh. what? It's hard. Now, also, it's hold hard on. for me to spin you, baby. Hold on. I'm this trying. is this is the deal. That, that, that is the hot tea there. The hot tea, <laughs> Simone, uh, attorney Simone, I got no name. Sorry. is that she she did put kids in the video. But this is the hot tea, uh, uh, red wine. I mean, Ross. When you sign that contract, this is what we need people to understand because there's a difference between having amendment rights. And then having your amendment rights amended when you sign a contract oh, um, yeah. for pay. She signed a contract for pay, which says that if ever you do anything during, while, after, even in your sleep, that causes stress to this distraction free environment, we don't care what your rights are. Yeah. And awesome. I think a lot of us, when we sign work contracts, you better read that fine line. You better read that fine print yeah. because yeah. that fine print will always trump what your normal rights are as a citizen. Am I wrong yeah. or right here? You're right. No, no, that that is right. And and also you have to remember, you can't, people want all the options and don't want any consequences. Mm -hmm. We live in a cancel culture. So you cannot be in a cancel culture, but also say, but I want to do whatever I want. You oh, have to understand you, you run the risk of being canceled. So what I would do if she came to me for a consultation and said, hey, will you take my case? I would say, I will not take your case. And here's what I think you should have done differently. Specifically, <laughs> once you decided you wanted to be this rapper, rapper, honey, pussy biscuit. Lady, ripper biscuit. <laughs> I love it's not biscuit. Whatever. Whatever. Trying to keep a straight face. I would have gone. I would have gone to, a, particularly after you just got your Teacher of the Year award, right? It's to choice. Exactly. Teacher, right. I would have gone to us, uh, the appropriate person in HR who has the authority, and say, "Hey, I just want to let you know I have a social media. It's getting some buzz, and I just want to uh, inform you of this. I actually would have done it before I accepted the job, and I would. I wanted to say, wow. are there any issues? prior to me taking this job because the issue was they loved her so much they said hey you can keep working here we just need you to delete your honey pussy videos and she was like well i don't want to delete my honey pussy videos i like them it's my creative thing i make money from it and so it was for that reason that you know they said well we yeah. can't do this last thing i want to share in this particular case is we have to talk about the importance of yeah i i'm my, the bailiff is getting on me, y'all. The bailiff is telling me, look at the camera. I'm doing like Brian. I'm looking at some <laughs> evidence here. Bailiff, I'm the judge here. What hey, this man, I'm quiet. You ain't got to, you ain't got to right. call me out. <laughs> okay. So, everybody, I'm Brian looking away. Been friends for I'm years, looking away. So he's not quiet. Right. Yeah. So, this is the deal. I also felt like she made a mistake because she made this statement. And, and allow me to look away. That's what I was looking away to find the statement. Her statement was, my dedication professionalism and passion for education have always been unwavering thought that was brilliant brilliant but she said regardless of any personal pursuits i may have what a beautiful chat uh, you were good sweetheart until you uh, until you yeah, gave yeah, them yeah, the yeah, bullet to yeah, shoot yeah, you with that exactly and i want to break this down i want you to all to think about this let me finish reading the rest of it and tell her where she went wrong in this statement, right? Okay. And then she said, if I was a horrible teacher, y'all would have dropped, y'all would have dropped me the day that I was a problem or it was a problem. If I was a horrible teacher, no. Y'all would no, have dropped she, me the day. No, no, no. She, the first no, thing she's is, right because what she's referring to is the fact that they, once they found out, they said, hey, could you please delete these? Because they wanted to keep her. But what she's not understanding is 
you were good at teaching. It doesn't right. it doesn't That's cancel right. the fact that you were still a distraction. That's right. And also, she's not that good of a rapper if you actually watch it. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't, I, I didn't want to go there. I watched it and I said, you should have just become an administrator. <laughs> right, right, right. Make a lot of, she the money you're throwing, she you, know, you ain't doing that bad. You're throwing away money Ooh, in the video. Okay? The like, legal uh, bingles are right. getting messy right, right now. The le- <laughs> All right, legal that. bingles. Get it. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, I love the fact, though, that the, they, the school district went back to the contract provision, which is like, this is a distraction, but we like you. If you remove the distraction, you can keep your job. Right. She wanted that, to amend right. the contract by saying, I don't want to remove the distraction. Well, honey, you this is what happened. That's right. Legal Beagle, you nailed it because we've learned that the school district tried to work with her for over four months. Yes. She because that's how good of a teacher and how much they valued her. All right, Detroit, Dominic uh, Brown. I'm sorry, sweetheart. But next time, call one of our legal beagles to help you in this sticky <laughs> situation. Now, let's go to what I think and will be one of the most interesting conversations of the evening. Caesar Emanuel, who happens to be probably one of the most entertaining uh, reality television personalities that I know personally. Um, I thought that this young man from New York really developed an an incredible brand around tattoos, introducing tattoos to our community and franchising it. Unfortunately, you can't beat dogs. Sorry. However, he has entered the chat and he's asked a question that many young athletes, successful, wealthy men who deal with young, beautiful ladies from IG, flying them in, putting them up, giving them some money, having great sex, have asked and are wondering, is flying out a girl, paying for her expenses, putting her in a hotel, and throwing her a little bit of cash for a little bit of fun, considered sex trafficking? Hmm. Now, this is my question, Attorney Redwine and Attorney Ross. Now, you know, I come from a a football family, professional NFL football family, multiple members in my family. Oh, who? Which one? Tell us names. I'm 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 down, Red Wine. (laughs) Calm down, Red Wine. Calm Calm down. Calm down. (laughs) So, and what a lot of them used to do is they would, they, they would, they would, they would groom these beautiful girls off of IG the ones that they know from through, from referrals and not, they would fly them in town, pay for their hotel, pay for all their food, pay for their flights, and they would have their fun, give them a little money, and pass them off to That's the sweet. teammates. Wow. And any, oh, other teammate, any other teammate who wanted to have a little fun in the festives could do it. And while she was there, she was making her bag, right? She was making her bag getting her shoes, getting her purses, and then she was oh. sending home, and they would share the Netherlands. expenses. Oh, how about Attorney that? Redwine, can oh. this be perceived as sex trafficking? Before we even go there, can we play guess the hoe? I'd like to guess first. <laughs> was it bad? <laughs> you are so All right. <laughs> you are so messy. Oh. She self-proclaimed. I did not proclaim her that. I, I, Toss this to Brian. Brian, can you talk to us about the legal definition of sex trafficking? Okay. As okay. I continue to make additional guesses, I'm going to think about other guesses, that would be as I, appropriate. <laughs> as I stop chuckling on your last comment, um, the United States government has two definitions, people, of trafficking in humans. One of them is for sexual efforts, and the other one is for forced labor. Forced labor. This, in Al's example, that would be considered sexual human trafficking. They cross the line when they start passing the person around. You can fly out your beautiful girlfriend. You can fly him out to Vegas. You can put him in the Bellagio. You can buy him some jewelry. You can dick it, dick it, dick it, whatever is illegal, whatever is in your moral fiber. But the moment you begin to tr- say, hey, come by. I got somebody for you. Let's split it. You have moved into the trafficking industry. Ooh, it's a fine line, a very God. thin line. It's about a millimeter thin. But if the federal government decides to pick up on what you're doing because they have nothing else to do that day, you too could have your house raided like Diddy. Dang. So you gotta be very careful before you say, come on out, girl. Caesar, I got bad news for you. 
flying a girl out could be considered sex trafficking. All right. Next question. Wait, wait, wait. We got a finger moment. One second. Flying her out, paying for everything, and giving her money after having sex. Isn't that considered prostitution? Well, it depends on what state you're in. In some states, prostitution is legal. Really? In some states, it's not. Depends on where you're at. All right. However, however, the moment you pass that person off, you have, listen to the definition, recruitment, harboring, transportation, provision, obtaining, patronizing, or soliciting of a person, person for the purpose of commercial sex act in which a commercial sex act is induced by force, fraud, or coercion, or which a person induced to perform has not been not turned 18, is a violation. So that's what Cassie and Rodney Jones is saying did it did. Correct. But wait, Correct. wait, wait, wait. What if they're over 18? If they're over 18, it's forced labor, or what was the other word used? If it's under 18, it's automatic. Strict liability. Oh, yeah, don't yeah, even yeah. ask any questions. Over 18, forced Fraud or coercion, and those are fact-based questions. Oh, we're those kidding. aren't. Those are fact. They're because co- they're convincing them with their money. Oh my god, I'm thinking of so many new income streams for my legal practice. Because, okay, I have this home, <laughs> oh, home girl. I talk about her a lot. My home home girl, but I'm a good Catholic oh, girl, so I never use her name because I'm a good oh, friend. Um, I just call her Mary Magdalene. You know, like the original whore. So oh. Maggie. She like saturated the Dallas Cowboys and then she saturated the Mag- the Mavericks. And she was like, could you hook me up with someone? I said, I can't. You saturated the market. But they would always give her money and things like that. And so now I'm, I am got to figure out what that statute of limitations okay, now, is. Okay. All right, Red Wine. I got one for you, Red Ron and Ross. Mm. All right, Brian. Yeah. I brought in IG girl Mindy. Pay for a flight. Pay for a hotel, gave her ten thousand dollars. Wait, you did that? No, I'm saying hypothetically. Oh, you, you and I invited my and I invited my teammate Rodney over to participate in a threesome. Mm. And Rodney gave me five thousand dollars to give Maggie. Is a threesome How sex funny. trafficking too? Is Maggie aware that he's going to come over before she comes to your house? If she's not aware and just goes ahead and consents, and God forbid she's had some alcohol or drugs, you could be you could be guilty of human trafficking. Damn. Yes, that's, that's the coercion. coercion. That's, that's the coercion. coercion. Wow. That's the coercion. Wow, you can't even get freaky these days without <laughs> can't even get rich and freaky. <laughs> I Unfor- thought the whole point of being rich is so you can be freaky. <laughs> Unfor- you gotta quit paying these hoes, guys. You can't pay them anymore. Not for that. Oh, Probably what happened? Just what, or something what, ha- else. what happened Don't to just know. going out to a club and meeting and a girl a and, and, and being a nice? It's over, right? Well, so, it, it, can you they- can you give them a tip? Can you say it's a tip? <laughs> Do you have to change? Do you have to change your verbiage? <laughs> yeah. Okay. This, 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 here's what I'm thinking. Here's what I'm thinking. You cash out the money and you say it's like for your flight, for your hotel, right? Knowing that it's an excessive amount, but like it's not your fault. You gave her the money. Like, oh, okay. She flew on Spirit Airlines, risking her life, you know, okay. and life and limb. That's not your fault. But then you give it. But you've already said like, oh, this is for that. Maybe that helps. And so, because like I used to like my, I had a boyfriend one time. And um, he would send me money sometimes. I would make a uh, cash app request. And I would always say when it said four and I would put sex and he would get so mad. He's like, yes, stop you doing should that. Get mad. Man, you are Why a lawyer. Can't... You should get mad. I was, like, I was gonna do it to him when he bought me the flight. I was gonna do it anyways. But he was like, stop it. My accountant's gonna see this. And I was like, oh, you guys, I, don't know how I told you that. last night, listen, the dudes are gonna hate us and, and, the, and the IG queens are gonna hate us too. Everybody's gonna hate us on this platform. I, 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 now, I guess if I had to give C or any advice into okay. this lifestyle that he chooses to participate in, you need to get Simone Red Wine to draft you releases. So ah. just get him to sign a release. Ah. I'm, 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 release. I live in I'm, Los Angeles. I'm in love with Caesar, and I want to come fly out and hang out with him and his friends. And they didn't force Got me, it. coerce me, or fraudulently make me do it. I'm over the age, yeah. age of 18, and I'm doing so of my own Surrey Juris volition. Boom. 
Yes. Do you think and they I, even do you even think they know what, the meaning or the spelling of those words? Half the codes can't read. Half the codes can't even read. But I'm gonna add one provision that says, and I recognize that if I am if I receive over twelve thousand five hundred dollars, I am required to report this to the IRS. Otherwise, oh. it is wire fraud. Boom. Pow. You know what? No, we got, young we got Miami this. here. We're not messing with attorney red white. I, even though I know that we can stay right here and talk about this all night, any good sex story is a good story to me. We got to move on, and we're moving on to can Kobe Bryant's parents sell his championship ring, which they did for a million dollars, without Kobe Bryant's estate's permission? So if Vanessa didn't give them permission, can his parents, attorney Brian Ross, can his parents sell that ring? Kobe's parents attempted to sell the ring in 2013. They took a half a million dollar advance. And Kobe interjected, filed a lawsuit to stop them from selling this ring. That's How right. it happened again is probably because Kobe bequeathed it to them. And I'll let Miss Redwine comment on that. Because the answer yeah. to your question is probably. There's probably nothing she could do because it was probably given to him as a gift. And the definition of a gift is something you intend to give away with no intent to give back. Uh -huh. It was given to him. There's Absolutely. nothing to say about that. But yes. there's like a history between them and their family. Like there's something there that's always. Yeah, they don't like Vanessa. They don't like his wife. And they have been estranged for some time now. Um, well, part of it is the wife, but there are others. I mean, let me not say I, I can't say that. Um, no. But part of the issue was the wife. There were other issues. Yes, they were estranged. But also he so back in 2013, he filed something to prevent it. It was um, confirmed to be a gift and therefore they were allowed to sell it. So they sold it for 100, I believe it was approximately $173,000. Right. Now, it was recently sold for one million by the person they sold it to. So it was not the family that got that million. Oh. It was the person they sold it to. You I mean, you tell me that person had a eight hundred thousand dollar. This profit? is why you come here for the tea. This is why you come here for the legal tea, because we don't we don't just repeat headlines. We examine the facts. So you're right. So yes, but what happened was what was interesting is they got the family got an advance of like half a million, right? But right. they only received the one seventy three. So. The type of loan there's called recourse loans, non-recourse. The gist of it is they probably were able to keep their 173, hopefully without owing the balance. But the the person that paid 173 gets the difference between the 173 wow. and the million. Wow, wow. that's wow, insane. that's real. Wow, that's insane. So they should have held it on. But you guys, it makes me it makes me think. What was going on with the family such that they felt they needed that much money? That says to me, they may have been having financial issues that for whatever reason, Vanessa and Kobe said, I'm not bailing you out of this. And I don't ever, I'm a big advocate of parents don't owe you because they're your parents, right? Mm. And, and so I don't, that doesn't mean Kobe doesn't love them and Vanessa, but I find it interesting that for whatever was going on, they felt they need well, I, I I do want to go on the record and say this: that Kobe has made it no secret he has always taken care of his parents. Always. I didn't know that. Ah. Yeah, I was yeah, that. No, he I was has wondering. always. Kobe has okay. always taken care of his parents, even in their dissension. Kobe always has taken care of his parents, their homes, their lifestyle. Even though he wasn't on the same side of the of the table with them at times, Kobe was that dude. Now that I do See? know. For wow. about now, what people know. are assuming sense. now is that now that Kobe is gone and there is tension between Vanessa and the parents, does Vanessa have you know this unspoken you know requirement to take care of the parents or throw them some money too? Now that to me is what that's a that's a you know, that the answer is that. yes. The answer, let me help you yeah. as you get through it. <laughs> Red wine, we, you, and I have agreed on 80% of everything. <laughs> on this one, hail to the fucking in the words I'm of with the you, rapper, Brian. In the I'm words with you, of the Brian. rapper Drake, she wasn't with me shooting in the gym. Okay? She so. actually was. <laughs> 
Same this is my thing. The this, is, this is they my know thing. each other since 17. Okay, this is my thing. This is my thing. All right. Um, those parents, regardless of how you paint this picture, created that little boy. Yes. And that little so. boy was raised, housed, made it to all his basketball practices, uh, trained to go to the NBA, went to the NBA, and became successful because of those parents. All right. Learned Italian. Now, just 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 out of basic GP of that from where I come from and how I value my morals. Now, would I share my entire state with them? Hell no. But I'm definitely not going to let anything harm my husband, who is the DNA that created my kids, right? My beautiful kids. She has beautiful kids. Had an incredible husband. I will not let anything happen to those individuals right. that right. created that amazing man that I experienced that gave me these amazing kids. I will never let them go homeless. I will never let them go hungry. I will never let them have any type of hardship as long as I was capable of doing otherwise. Simone, the estate's worth six hundred million dollars. I love you, Al. I love you, Al. But this, this—you never took. You clearly never took the L set because if you did, you would understand. <laughs> no, no, no. That no, you no, are no, absolutely. No, absolutely. We we know what it is. I'm not saying that no she obligation. has to. I'm saying. Morally, I'm just saying. This is this is this I, is why this is called a court of public opinion. We mix in public opinion, which is not legal based, not LSAT based, not JD based, not license based. Everybody in this oh. court of public opinion has an equal say here. So I understand legally she has absolutely <laughs> no obligation. But I'm saying, no, I'm not morally, referring to legally. What right, I'm talking morally. about, but, but I'm glad you said that because I want to be very clear. If anybody has ever taken the LSAT and you didn't go do well on it, it, it's not about law, right? What it's about logic. That's the difference. There. But what I'm saying is, Al, you are making a premise that they must have been a little, a level of decent and kind to her. That's so right. I'm assuming. No, no, no. That you're I'm making... not making any premise. Whoa. I'm not making that premise. No, not okay. at all. So what I'm, I'm not saying making is any this. premise. What I'm saying is, just out of GP, that they created him, raised him fostered him to the NBA to make the money that he made, to create the brand that he created, to meet her, to marry her, and to create those great careers. Just out of GP, this is me. If I had $600 million, I don't care. That's my mom. That's right. my dad. There's no way in hell I would ever, ever, I don't care. And listen, we're going to get off to this because this is passionate to me. Oh, no, There's no that. way in hell that I would ever, 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 ever. I don't care. As long as they didn't molest none of my kids, they didn't try to molest me, they didn't try to kill me or anybody, dirty stuff like Beast, that. Yeah. I am never, ever, ever, and Kobe was the exact same way, going to let his parents go without. Period. Period. So, all right. Agreed. All right, y'all. I told you there was going to be shouting. I told you there was going to be some disagreement. I told you it was going to get messy. And that's okay. That's what the court of public opinion allows. <clears throat> There's going to be times that you're not going to agree with any of us and you're going to have a different feeling too. That's what this show does and it allows. It gives a voice to the voices sometimes. And of course, because it's my show, I had the loudest voice on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. But we should also, between all of us, always foster an environment to agree, to disagree. And that's what we're doing right now. All right, let's keep moving. <laughs> All right, everybody. Reggie Bush said that he wants his credibility back. He said that what the NCAA did to him defamed him. So what is he doing? He's suing them for defamation of character. And the NCAA is firing back. They're basically saying, kiss my... <coughs> you know what? Yep. They're saying that this is a false lawsuit and that fundamentally the whole thing is flawed. Now, attorney Redwine and attorney Ross, this is their argument. They're saying whether you are part of the NIL or not, which at that point there was no NIL, you were not allowed to receive direct payment. Does that make a difference, Attorney uh, Brian Ross? He, 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 Reggie's problem is that at the time these alleged acts were committed, not just by Reggie, other potential USC athletes, it was illegal to do it. 
That's his problem, that he's trying to go back and undo the hands of time. I've had many clients who were convicted of possession of, let's say, marijuana yeah. while they were on probation. And in that same state, the marijuana laws like California were relaxed and the person still sits in jail. And that's what he's up against, the history. And you also have to remember that the NCAA levied sanctions against the University of Southern California, not Reggie Bush specifically. So he's trying to go back and undo something that he really wasn't convicted of in the first place. Mm. That's awesome. That's All right, Red means. Wine, tell me why that now there's a total of five states, though. Five states are suing the NCAA for this very thing right here. <laughs> Now, I believe it was because, so remember, Reggie's main issue is that he was stripped of his Heisman Trophy. Right. As a red wine girl, right? As someone who, my uncle was up for a Heisman Trophy. He was one of the five, they narrowed down to five. I, I get it. It's a big deal. And so really what he wants is to get his name back in the rafters. Same thing with these other five schools. I Now, I don't know exactly which schools these other five are. But my guess, my hypothesis mm -hmm. is that these other five schools let's probably had some infractions. Yeah, let's see who they are. They likely yeah. had other infractions, but also their issue is that over time, they did the same thing. And at the mm. end of the day, if it has been determined, the reason why we have NFL, NIL is because it has been determined that NCAA schools for decades and over a century were making millions on the backs of their students and their players, and they had to share nothing. But also, oh. when we talk about the sharing, yes. There you so go. it's like a form of reparations. Think of it that way. NIL is reparations for student athletes. You got so it. Your mama couldn't get wow. it. Your daddy couldn't get wow. it. And now it's your turn, and we support you. There you go. You're That's right. So uh, ten, like the state of Tennessee and Virginia sued the NCAA over NIL recruitment ban. See, I told well, you. See? All, right, all, right, red me. Wine. all right, red Don't wine. All right, red wine. I know I'm pretty, but I'm brilliant. <laughs> no, I'm attorney. Uh, <laughs> Oakland's educated, Ivy League educated. Play with me now, uh, red wine. Uh, Come on, red wine. All right, <laughs> attorney Ross and attorney red wine. Have you ever been in a courtroom and you had some facts that you wanted to share, and the judge said no, and you'd be like, "But no, no," and the judge says, "No, I don't want to hear it." Have you ever been in those situations? Every Jesse, day. Don't tell me now. All right. Is have you ever been in that situation, Red Wine? Judges don't tell me now. Mm -mm. <laughs> well, this judge did. It will. It does. So all you commenting about let Judge Red Wine finish her sentence. Guess what? I don't have to. It's like every judge. Literally. I don't have to. If I don't want to hear it, the star. I'm the judge of this public opinion, and I could cut her off, even though we never want to hush. Attorney Red White, because she always, every show, drops some jewels for us. But understand, this is my courtroom. It's my public opinion on my channel. And if I don't want to hear it, I'll cut her off. Okay? That's how the judge do it in real life. You can have the best explanation ever, and they'll say, I don't care. I don't want to hear it. Tell them to head to my channel if they want to hear more. <laughs> and then you can hear my soliloquies. I, That's right. My All of it. Uninterrupted. Today. Uninterrupted. Of there it. We All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's keep it moving. Our last topic today. We're going to talk about this turkey hut, right? Turkey leg turkey hut. Turkey leg hut. Al, turkey, turkey leg. Turkey, oh, turkey leg hut. Now, turkey leg hut, from my understanding, is a very popular establishment in the state of Texas in the city of Houston. Well, it just got ugly. Turkey Leg Hut is filing for bankruptcy, mm -hmm. but they're filing in bankruptcy amidst a very messy divorce. Well, is the wife trying to get out of not paying what she owes the husband? Attorney Red Wine, take it away. All right. So here's the thing. What's interesting here, and I'm going to preface this by saying every time I ever gone there, everyone was kind to me. The husband was very kind. The wife was always kind. And I love their little spinach and shrimp situation. So keep going up there, y'all. In the midst of this, keep, they still feed you. Uh, they may not pay you, but they're going to feed you. Anyhow, 
my point is, so what's going on now is they've been married for years. Um, but what happened was the what everything is in the wife's name. The entire business is in wow. the wife's name. And that's what makes it sticky and messy and juicy. And the husband, admittedly, is a five-time felon. So he states, hey, my wife and I came together before we got married, before we opened this, the restaurant. And we said we were going to put everything in her name. That way she can get you know business loans and stuff because they don't want a loan to a felon. Here's the issue. So, so as a result, he has kind of sat back and he's like, I did have, you know, because... There is no prenup, but the issue is this. They opened the restaurant while they were dating. I'm sorry. Yeah, they opened the restaurant opened while the they were dating before they were married. That wow. makes it her separate property. Wow. It makes it her separate property. So then, therefore, with respect to the marriage, the only thing she has to share or the only thing that would be community property would be perhaps a component of what it paid to her, like as her salary mm-hmm. and yep. potentially the evaluation. But her filing for bankruptcy, it's two things. She's claiming on her side, she's saying there was monetary mismanagement and she's of the money and she's blaming him for it. Mm-hmm. But even without that, because the value of the business per the bankruptcy record is only 50 thousand dollars they've got 4.7 million dollars worth of debt per the bankruptcy records 4.7 million dollars worth of debt how did they get that debt if the business is only worth 50 so it's only 50,000 in assets oh the business is worth a lot if they had to auction the business i anticipate they could easily get five to seven million dollars at a time okay today hold that right there Attorney Ross, now I'm no lawyer, but I've been in situations where there was a prenup. And even though they started the business while they were dating, can't he argue that after they were married and all of the acceleration, meaning the appreciation, meaning the valuation, any increase, can he argue that he was a part of that. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So all of the, go ahead, Al, I'm sorry. All of the you. appreciation. So what I would do, and I don't know him, listen, I'm just telling you, just, just thinking logically, I would say at the time of the marriage, what was the valuation of the company? I would look at the, the, the receipts. Yes. I would look at the daily runs of what was made at that company, and I would use as the baseline of what that company is worth. The structure that it's in, uh, my daily run, meaning the register income coming in, I would use that as the baseline. And then I would track that so that anything that was different from that from when I was married and a part of the business, I would contribute to the two of us. And I would say anything above that baseline now would have to be shared and split because equal effort was given. Simple math. Simple if math. Off, oh, if we start right. off now, with 100000 good, I'm sorry. Before I would allow her to bankrupt me, I would ask for a valuation and I would ask for the courts to entertain a firehouse sale wow. or a fair <laughs> sale. I know uh, you're not talking about a fire. Uh, no, I'm saying not, not a firehouse sale. Wrong. I wouldn't do firehouse sale. I would ask for a fair sale. Right? Okay, so the, the, the provision you're talking about is called an accounting. It's an actual part of the lawsuit, accounting. Keep going. Right. I would block the bankruptcy because that's blocking. She's blocking me Good. from being able to say that I had any contribution to the business. Right? Correct. So I wouldn't allow her to bankrupts, bankrupt the business without a forensics accounting coming in, without somebody doing some type of valuation. And before you do a bankruptcy, I would do a sale. I would offer it to the market to be picked up and sold. It's, it's, <clears throat> it's really a nightmare of a situation because but what you're saying is correct. They started the business off, it was $100,000. We got married over the next five, six, seven, I don't know how long they were married for, the business appreciated to $5 million. The divorce buzzword of the day, people, is co-mingle. That's so, it. Co-mingle. Was he there? Did he put his own $50 into it? When Are there Facebook in? pictures? 
Are there the pictures Facebook. taking pictures with friends and family of him over and over again? He is he, there he, every day. Even after they fired him, I saw him with my own two eyes coming up there in his uniform. He even sells oysters across the street from the turkey leg hut in his turkey leg hut outfit, uniform. He is there. Continue. Was he telling employees what time to come to work? Was Ooh. he doing work shifts? Ooh. Was he actually, they got sued by U.S. Foods for $1.3 million, right. whatever the number Ooh. is. Was he on was he on that account? All of that comes in. And so she tries to say, what's well, my business? Slow down, beautiful. Not necessarily. Hold on. But, but here's what I'm saying. Al, you're right. Some Al, you're right. That is how what Al had said, if you're tuning in, is that I would value that I would say, what's the value of the business? And use that and be like, I'm entitled to the growth of the business. That is why she is playing chess, not check. That's okay. why she filed for bankruptcy because it was valued at fifty or at five million, and what the bankruptcy is saying is today it is at most worth fifty thousand. So it is only fifty thousand dollars they can fight about because when you are absolutely right, but what happens is the date of the valuation is when you are divorcing. So it's now, not then. If you would have did it then, that's different. And also, as we speak to how we got there, her allegations is that he mismanaged the funds of the business. But another level of the chest. But that doesn't matter. Is, unfortunately, it, it oh, matters. Oh, it does. Unfortunately, I don't think it matters. Hold on. Let me, let me say it. I'm going to speak to it from here. Okay. Because what happens is what the, the component that the divorce court is going to look at is the money that the business brought in, right? But they're also going to look at her salary and his salary. Okay. He was an employee. He got a big salary from it. She didn't get a salary. Well, she, and didn't that's get a, she didn't get a salary because she probably didn't want to pay taxes on it. He got a salary. Well, she's also the business owner. She, she, he got a salary because he's a felon and he can't get a job. And this is the only way he's going right, to make right, right. Money. All right. So hold on. Hold on. Hold on, Attorney Redwine. So there's yeah. so many legs to this. And I wish we could keep going, but we can't. This is why right. this show is said, so good. He <laughs> said legs. Turkey leg. I love the pun. There's I so many legs to this. And I, and I really want to keep going. And I know that we can. But oh, oh, God. I wish we could. All right, everybody. All right, algorithms. <laughs> All right, algorithms. All right, soulmates. I told you. I told you what it was going to be, right? I told you it might be rowdy. I told you it might be messy. I told you it might be a little bit of hollering and screaming and telling people to be quiet and interrupt them and all the above. Hopefully, you had your pen and your pad, and hopefully, we taught you a couple of things that you can take and use in your own personal life. Before we get out of here, I'm going to take the next 60 seconds, and I'm going to entertain a couple of questions because, as always, I want our viewers and our fans to be heard. So if you have any questions, please hit us in the chat. Also, please, 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 if you enjoyed tonight's show, show us some love by giving us a couple of those red wine emojis couple of those briefcase emojis and don't forget my lovely fax emojis lastly before we get out of here everybody please remember to watch us on the replay hit that like button hit that subscribe button if you haven't but you know what i'm gonna introduce you to a new button <coughs> hit that share button because we want it to go viral and we want everybody else to get this gym that you're getting to and please don't forget to leave a comment all right, so before we go away, Bailiff. All right, uh, Dewan, Don, Diana C. said, didn't he burn down the office in the back of the restaurant with the receipts proving his theft? Yeah, that's the part I was trying to get at. I'll, I'll talk about it later on my channel. Just head over to Girl Is That Legal <laughs> right after this. Yeah. All right, sounds good. Next question. <laughs> Monique <clears throat> L'Oreal Stinson says, Latchkey Kids film now. This wow. was a wealth of information. So basically, if you're an adult and you had a fight, a flight in a hotel covered, you're outside of the law. <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> it's not a question. I, oh, so okay. Basically, so basically, if you're an adult and you had your flight in hotel covered, you're outside of the law. No. There has to be coercion, right? Right, well, Brian? Now, well, if you trafficked it on the other side and you got a little <laughs> bit of money from a couple of other guys. <laughs> if you forced your roommate to come with you, you might be guilty of something. <laughs> My right. girl, Maggie, was willing. <laughs> All right, last question, please. All right, Summer Rain said, y'all see that Cassie, yes, is cooperating with the feds. Yes, we did. I told 
does that actually mean? What does that actually mean, Attorney uh, Brian Ross? Being that you are a you know worked with federal cases in a criminal defense lawyer, is this good for Diddy or bad? It's bad for Diddy. She filed a complaint. She settled. I'm sure that she signed some sort of gag order. That's what I know. Though, but that won't supersede any federal issue. You can't force a person to stipulate away what they know if the feds will come and intervene for general safety and welfare. So it's bad. It's bad for them. <laughs> you know, Settlements right? so, will never prevent you from telling the truth to the cops. Ever. After ever. Sings, after Sings, I hear you. After Sings says, Al Reynolds, who did you fly out for threesomes? Oh, <laughs> my God. <laughs> I'm still guessing. Let's, let's be very clear. If, or hypothetically, if the judge, Al Reynolds, did fly someone out for a threesome, they never got compensated. <laughs> 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 All right, Al Gerators and some <laughs> age, I thoroughly enjoyed our legal beagles. Please put some emojis in the chat for the wonderful Simone Redwine, which we enjoy immensely always. Thank you. And the incredible um, criminal defense attorney, Brian Ross. You guys have a good Bye. night. And don't forget to tune back in tomorrow for the public, the court of public opinion right here at 6.30 p.m. Pacific and 9.30 p.m. Oh, no, yeah, Eastern. All right, everybody. Have a good night. Good night.